Good afternoon, and welcome to the on-record portion of the Rockbridge Report. I'm Holly Southers, and joining me today is Mary Harvey, one of Lexington City Council newly elected members. Good afternoon, Mary. How are you? Fine, Holly. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. Glad to be here. Let's start talking about City Council. To okay. Start off with. When you take your seat in January, what goals would you like to initially accomplish? Uh, as far as my work on council? Yes. Well, I'd like to learn everything I can. The homework started the day after the election, so as of November 3rd, I was doing my homework with my morning coffee, and there's an awful lot to learn. I think one of the, the most interesting things I've learned in the past month is when I was on board of zoning appeals or on the youth task force or um, on planning commission, your focus is very narrow. You're, you're involved in what issues are there and what's coming on your agenda. City Council is everything. And it's, it's really fascinating and it takes a lot of work. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it. And what have been the challenges? What has been the hardest thing to learn about? To learn about? Um, I like to talk. <laughs> and uh, I, guess, I guess listening really to other council members as we see each other on the street or you know it's Christmas and so there's a lot of parties and, and uh, gatherings going on and I'll see someone I know that's on council and just chit chat for a minute and and mostly I want to ask uh, you know what do you think of this or what's happening with that but I think what I really need to do right now is listen ask but yet listen so so that's my biggest challenge right now because I do like to talk but one of the issues that you brought up last Tuesday at the town hall budget meeting was about local, the city or local organizations using university catering. How could the city um, receive revenue from, from the universities by doing this? Or how can the city further promote downtown businesses through using local businesses? Well, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. It's not any, anything that I want to step on anyone's toes. And I know we're sitting here at Washington Lee and I appreciate the opportunity to talk about it. I've been in touch with a group of people in uh, Blacksburg and they are called Playfair Tech and you can go to their their webpage playfairtech.com or whatever it is and find out what their issues are. Their issues are different than what our issues are here. What I really want to know is how things are broken down. Now Karen Roundy is our city treasurer and uh, not treasurer, um, accountant and she's very good at, at finding what pockets of money need to come from where. My concern is the business tax on the equipment that is used by the caterers when organizations come to meet on the WNL campus. I want to know what are the legalities between using a campus for a meeting of a group that's not from the campus. It's not a campus organization. And it really surprises me when I find out that the Chamber of Commerce, whose big push is downtown business and, and spend your money downtown, is using Washington and Lee for a meeting place and using their catering services. So that's where I really would like to see what, what the breakdown is. I have not picked up the phone and called anyone at WNL. I'm still doing my research elsewhere, but that will come. So, and, and that's where I'm looking. Is there a little pocket of money that we can go for? It doesn't matter how little it is. Everything helps, so that's my interest in it. And one of the things you mentioned was about using, particularly um, taxes from the revenue that was used for that, or taxes from the equipment that was used. Right, right. Um, when you have a business, and, and I am a business person, and I have a piano, my piano is taxed because I teach on that piano. Well, I did. I don't, as of you know, 2010, that's a different license that I'll have. But that is what happens when you have equipment, and it's part of the revenue that comes into the city of Lexington. If that catering company, which is on WNL property, is using that, and are they paying taxes on it? That's my question. And if they're using it not for a university function, <laughs> doesn't that money go to the city? So I'm not an expert, believe me, I'm not an accountant. I don't know the line items, but I'd like to know. So there's, there's my question. That's one of my challenges <laughs> that's coming up, so. Mm -hmm. And several local businesses, especially in the downtown area, have been closing their doors recently. 
What would you do to help increase local business or how would you try to encourage more of the shop local campaign around the city? That's, that's tough because um, overall the economy in Southwest Virginia is suffering. We are not the only ones suffering. Um, actually, we're kind of protected in some ways because we have a pretty good tourist base. Although it's been dropping, people aren't spending the money. You know, would you want to drive all over the place at 289 a gallon? Are, are we that complacent that we're going to mm -hmm. accept that? But anyway, that's another issue. Um, and we have the students. Now, my, my, my little issue there is um, the bookstores are now providing so many things for the students, and that's part of the master plan of the two universities, that those students really don't need to come downtown. Do they really need to go to the coffee shop? No. So that worries me. We need the students to come in and spend their money. As far as getting people to come in and shopping downtown, all we can do is advertise. All we can do is get the word out. Please come downtown, do your Christmas shopping. Come downtown and spend your money. Um, I just, you know, uh, I guess I told you I'm getting married. My fiance and I went downtown to look for a ring. We could have gone online. I did go online. We could have gone to Lemons or K's or any of the, you know, but no, we wanted to spend our money downtown. And that's what you have to do is you have to make that choice that you want to support downtown. So. Um, another one of the platforms that you've pushed for, especially in previous years and organizations that you've been involved with and through your campaign for city council was increasing recycling in Lexington. Absolutely. And you've said that you applaud City Council for their efforts so far. Absolutely. But what else can they do to make Lexington a more green city? Well, just take the recycling program, for instance. When I moved here from Iowa in 1992, 18 years ago, we were recycling a, a gamut of things that is not being recycled right now. For instance, you have numerous types of plastic bottles, number two, number seven. You know, you have all of those. Uh, glass, different types of glass. Um, I'd like to see an expansion into the tin, aluminum foil, um, you know, the pie plates, every possible thing that we can think of, I would like to have recycled. And I'm sure as conversations go on, and, we, and we've cut back on our trash pickup because it's been so successful. And I'm really glad to see Lexington doing that. I just think there's more that we can do with the recycling. And it's going to take it, talking to the company that does it, expanding the service with them. It might cost us more money initially, but it could save us in the end. So. And I know you've mentioned before that there are larger things that can be recycled, like computers, for example, or cell phones. Do you think the community is made aware of those things, those things are able to be recycled and reused? I'm not so sure they are. In fact, um, uh, the Buena Vista company that's handling the recycling is one of the few places that I know that will actually wipe your hard drive. So you don't have to worry about putting your old laptop outside. No one's going to pick it up and use it. They'll wipe it. Um, I think that we do need to inform the public more than we do. And, and that is a breakdown, I believe, within City Hall. And I just think letting people know, yes, your cell phones can be recycled. However, they can also be given to Project Horizon. They can be used elsewhere. So if you have an old cell phone, don't toss it. Pick up the phone and call the city hall or call a council person and say, what do I do with this? Or better yet, let's have a running column in the News Gazette or in the Rockbridge Weekly. Uh, you know, let people know what can be recycled where and when. I don't think that's a big deal to ask the newspapers to do that for us. Another issue that you talked about during the campaign was increasing um, awareness for the buildings downtown that have deteriorated and yes. increasing renters' rights and privileges. How would you address that with the City Council now that you're a member of City Council and what changes would you like to see made? Well, I think everybody on Council has the same concerns that I do because it's, it's affecting downtown, which affects business. Um, it's going to take stricter ordinances and enforcement of the ordinances that we already have. So my goal as a council person is to get to work on those ordinances and then keep them enforced. So yes, we have to look at them. We, we're we going to have to redo them. And as far as tenant landlord rights, there's commissions within the Commonwealth that handle that. Maybe we need to look at them again and say, can we go to them and, and increase things or decrease 
responsibilities on either side, whatever needs to be happening, council's going to have to look at that. And that will be my request of, other, of the council. And do you think that there should be some type of ordinance to enforce that landlords live within the city? I know that that's been a major problem that um, renters have felt neglected because their landlords will live in Roanoke or either in, or either in Northern Virginia. Can we do that? I mean, is that legal to do? I doubt it. I don't see, I mean, you know, I used to have a rental in Cocoa Beach. I mean, what could I do about that? I was living in another state and that was in Florida. No, um, I don't think that that's what we can require. I don't see how legally we, re we can require that. However, I do think that we can require inspections and I want to see the inspections. I want to see the paperwork from the inspections. I don't want someone to say, oh yeah, a staff person looked at it. No, I want to see it. And I want to see what was inspected. Um, I think that we just need more manpower, which is going to cost money. So, you know, we might have to someday come to the taxpayers and say, you want to keep downtown safe for our tenants, for our businesses, for you know, uh, the people leasing out these buildings, we're gonna have to come to you and get more people in there inspecting. Are you willing to put that tax money up for that? And that might be the question we have to ask. And the RE Lee building has been a major topic of conversation throughout this fall, especially. Do you think that if it is renovated, it will bring more business to the city? Absolutely, absolutely. We have so many hotels out in the county. Why can't we bring those people here? Yeah, bring them here. Let's 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 let them spend their money. Let's give them the opportunity to spend their money. Let them walk out of the R.E. Lee and go buy coffee at the coffee shop, or walk up the street and eat lunch at Nick's, or you know walk across the street and buy a uh, you know a cooking mitt for Grandma. Yeah, let's bring them downtown. I I challenge them. I think we will make money. Yes. Well, thank you so much for thank joining you, us, Mary. And thank you for joining us for the on-record portion of the Rockbridge Report. I'm Holly Southers. Have a good afternoon.